Hey guys, so what's been happening in the hobby this week? Well, I thought we'd have a little bit of a discussion on the importance of law, you know, in, in, in miniature games. Well, you know, in general, I guess, uh, for these type of things, uh, fantasy universes, that sort of thing, or things that end up being products, games, etc. Uh, in this case, we're looking at, uh, you know, Warhammer, that sort of thing, tabletop, and just, you know, some pros and cons on it, you know, how, how much does it influence uh, your experience, you know, what are, what are some of the, is it an important factor, not important factor for you, all that sort of thing. Just go into those sort of details and having a bit of a discussion on it because obviously I have my own opinion on that uh, but everyone has their kind of feelings on how much they like law or don't like it um, or how important it is for them in terms of their experience within the hobby uh, specifically and um, you know what that does for you and all of that so while, I, while, while we do that I thought uh, what better way to do a I guess a law discussion than uh, doing a miniature which is from a book uh, so you know the Hollow King here uh, has just been released and what an awesome miniature right like this is a great vampire and I, I ever since I saw I've been really keen to paint this so we're definitely going to be doing it in my um my blue green blend so sorry if you've seen that before but it's going to be uh pretty cool I can't wait he's got the perfect cloak here that's just uh begging for that color scheme and so we're going to be doing it and uh I mean he'll look pretty similar to what the actual one looks like I mean you know the the, the real one has the brass armor and so on and, and the blacks and that sort of thing which is right up my alley that's the sort of color scheme I would pick for him anyway so he's going to look pretty similar except for that blue green blend uh yeah it's going to be really really cool so I guess uh strap yourself in and uh let's get started eh okay so where to begin well I mean you know lore is one of those things that really is uh, particular to the person, right? Uh, for some people, <clears throat> it's everything and it's it really is an intrinsic part of their hobby and it's you can't really separate it. For others, um, maybe more purely gaming focused possibly uh, where that doesn't really play a part or they're, they're really interested in just the mechanics of the game that they're playing or the, the practicalities of things. And that can also include the hobby too, like you just like painting up you know, nice looking miniatures and, and the lore part of it doesn't really matter or what, what their story is doesn't matter. Uh, those type of things, you get those those different extremes and everything in between. Uh, you know, and, and so there's, there's the personal, I, I guess, feelings on lore. And then there's the broader uh, question of how important is lore to the product, right? So there's, there's, there's to you, like what, what, what is important to you, and then also how important is it uh, to the, the thing that it's a part of. And so they're, they're probably two separate questions and not something that uh, necessarily gets separated out when people talk about this, but there is two types of importances going on there, um, you know, and so we're going we're gonna, to, you know, dig into that a little bit. So I guess, you know, from the personal point of view, uh, we're looking at, you know, usually that comes comes about by how, how you are as a person and, and what your first interaction is uh, with the hobby specifically. So, you know, I can remember, so my own experience, uh, you know, one of the first things I guess that you see, uh, you know, back in the back in the good old days, uh, you know, back then you got to remember the internet wasn't like a massive thing. Or in fact, actually, when I first engaged with this, it wasn't really a thing at all. Uh, and you know, the only way you were going to engage with with something like the hobby was either a magazine, white dwarf in in a news agent, or more more than likely uh, a little hobby store that might have had some of that stuff. Because I was around in Australia when there wasn't Games Workshop stores here. Uh, that's when I when I began uh, at a very wee little age. And, um, you know, and so you saw it in, in like a model hobby shop and, you know, there would be like a little diorama in the window or something. And so my first experience really in engaging, I guess, with lore is really the miniatures. So they came first for me. And for a lot of people, that's what comes first is the miniature. But behind that miniature is all this lore. And we're going to go into the importance of that in a second. But we're, we're talking about that personal experience. And so you know, you, you engage with the product first, generally, you know, from, for quite a long time. These days, that can be different. You might be watching a YouTube channel that focuses on lore and you, you get into the story first or you pick up a book and you read that first. A lot of people these days actually engage with the lore first and then get interested in the miniatures and the, and the game and so on. So there, there, is, there is that. But back in, in the good old days, you probably would have engaged with the product first before you understood anything about the lore or the, the actual story or the background of anything. 
And so that was my interaction and that's how I sort of, you know, got into it. But I quickly found that I really enjoyed the world, right? I mean, it speaks to you. There's something about that because it comes out in the design, right? And again, we'll talk about that, that influence uh, on the product and its importance generally. Uh, but, you know, from the personal point of view, that product really helps you uh, connect to that law because you're seeing these beautiful images and then you want to know more about them you know and, and part of that experience is you know building and painting these things you're 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 attaching a lot of uh, i guess you know close connection to these objects and so you care about them and once you start caring about something like this that's when your real interest in what what it's about where it comes from all of that stuff becomes more and more and more important and uh, when you have really good writing like we've had in the past, you know, Dan Abnett and etc., uh, that, that, that really paint a, a really vivid and, and amazing uh, picture of, the, of these worlds. Uh, predominantly, let's say we're talking about Games Workshop like Warhammer, um, you know, that grim dark universe, whether it be in the fantasy or the sci fi setting, it, it's really evocative, right, for a certain type of person. You know, there's not just a certain type, there's a lot of us out there, right? We really like that dark fantasy. I love it so much, I created my own brand, Blight of Gods, which you can see in the down there you know I love all that dark fantasy stuff it's something that I really enjoy you know I, I learned how to sculpt because of it I did all those things and you know that speaks to you right and so you are interested in that in that story in that law <clears throat> and how it affects but you can also be it doesn't mean you're not a gamer or you're not interested in you know a, a more uh, dry or clear cut or more gaming experience because the gaming experience can also be narrative right it doesn't have to be just you know just game mechanics it can be you know that stereotype it can actually be a very narrative experience and and for a lot of gamers that is the story is interconnected with that gaming experience uh, there's plenty of channels that do that plenty of people out there that have been doing that from the beginning uh, you know the, the the narrative and the story of the campaigns that they create and so on I mean it's this this whole tabletop experience comes Comes from a role play experience and that's all narrative right so you you've got the story is influencing people's personal love of this hobby right from the very beginning through different means but you know I, I believe it is pretty important even if you yourself maybe don't feel it's as important uh, it does it does affect you even if you're not really reading the stories like that doesn't necessarily like you don't have to think it's important like you you only think it's important if you read you know or whatever uh, you can still have value there even if you're not someone that reads a lot uh, that those two things aren't really uh, necessarily uh, together or whatever so you know you've got these different elements uh, creating an importance for you and, and, and combining and, and melding together so yeah, that personal experience does get affected by law, and, and I think that it is important. Most people, I, th I think, in this hobby would would agree that you know the law of, of it is pretty cool, right? Even if you're someone that doesn't really get into it that much, it's still if it wasn't there, I, I think you would you would find that the the hobby would be pretty dry and pretty pretty uninteresting, really. And that leads us on to, I guess, the second half of this equation, which is, you know, how that law affects the product itself, because that in turn affects your experience, right? So from that point of view, uh, we, we, can, we can argue, I guess, over the personal importance of law, but from a product point of view, it's extremely important. And this comes from an artist, a designer who designs his own stuff, uh, who has been on movies and so on. I've done sculpting for film and all that sort of thing and understand the value of, of, of I guess, a narrative or a, or a an, an underpinning, a, a, a structure that's based on words, you know, that, that, it, that is describing something uh, is extremely important before you go to the stage of actually creating an image or a physical product or anything like that. You need an idea, you need a narrative. And, and that law, that, that grounding is very important. You know, if we use an example, uh, Lord of the Rings, you know, um, you know Peter Jackson's uh, movies. You know, they, they did a huge amount of research. And if you if you watch their extent, like, you know, the, the making ofs and all that sort of thing, you'll see just how much work went into establishing and grounding that, that world in something real so that you would believe it, so that you would get into it. And it affects the design. It affects how how, how lived in that design is, how, how how real it feels. And all those things are really important. And, and so, you know, when we look at Warhammer, they've got, you know, decades worth of, of, of grounding in lore and so on to, to make that really cool miniature. If we, if we take a look at any of the stuff that's being released right now, 
it's got a legacy of, of uh, description and, and so on behind it so that those those sculptors, they're not just talented sculptors or designers just coming up with things out of thin air. They're using a, a you know, a, a narrative to help <clears throat> drive their, their inspiration to sculpt well, to design well. If you've got a very poor sort of, uh, I guess, you know, structure behind what you're doing, the end result isn't going to be as good. And that's, and that's pretty much you know, uh, universally true. There are exceptions, but mostly if that groundwork is good and that means narrative and law, then you're going to end up with a better product. Uh, you know, it, it's just, it's just a fact, you know, that, that's, that's just something that it gives you something to, you can't really create in a vacuum. You need, you need, uh, inspiration around you in order to actually create something of any value. It, it doesn't work. You know, that's not the way creativity works. I, I guess if, if you never tried it before or done it, you know, uh, the you know give yourself a you can give yourself a challenge you know a day challenge give yourself an open brief where you just create anything and see how far you get and then give yourself restrictions and and a structure around it that is related to like describing something about the thing that you're going to create and then suddenly even a word even a single word uh, will help and then suddenly you'll find it way easier to create the thing when you've got something to work off of uh, so that's kind of one of those basic principles so from a from a, a law point of view in terms of value from the product or design side of things itself, I think it's intrinsically important. And uh, something that, that, that I guess doesn't get talked about a lot, we even see, you know, Games Workshop knows how important it is because their article about the old world and, and not just the old, sorry, not the old world, the, um, their Dawnbringer Crusade thing, the, the sort of the human aspect of Age of Sigma, even when they were talking about their design, they did this, I don't know, maybe it's about six months ago, an article on, you know, they're, they're working on the design of Cities of Sigma and all that sort of thing. Uh, they do touch on, even in, <clears throat> even in that article, the importance of the human uh, perspective uh, within their Age of Sigma world and that it's lacking at the moment. And that's true because the Stormcast are these sort of reforged, sort of reanimated souls, you know, of a bygone era. They're not really giving you the the human experience of that world. And one of the things that made the old world Warhammer, you know, fantasy so compelling is that you were, it was told from the point of view of average humans who are living in this really dark and terrible place, you know, with all these fantastical creatures and so on, you know, always out to, out to get them. And so the, the, and it was a very sort of, you know, um, I guess medieval Germanic kind of, uh, European, uh, setting, right? So we had something to tie it to. It was, it was very, I guess it had a believable side of the design and the, and the narrative that, that this could be us in, in this sort of like medieval setting. And so you, you care more about it. And that's something that Age of Sigmar desperately needs. And so they're working on that. You know, they've said that because it, it is a really important thing to have a narrative that you can connect to. And that means a human experience. And that's going to help. That's going to help so much with their design and with the, with the, I guess the connection that you can find with the, with, with the models and so on, because it, it definitely helps, right? And so we have these two uh, opposing uh, aspects of, of law in terms of, I guess, product and then law in terms of personal experience. And so for me, I guess, um, I, I think it's, um, you know, really important. I think it's something that, that really helps uh, make the world come alive to understand something of the stories. You know, you just read a couple of those stories, whether they be in army books or black library or whatever it is. And it, help, it helps just tie in a little bit more, you know, a little bit more value for, for, for what you're doing, um, you know, or just, you know, a nice bit of description in one of the missions, you know, just to just to get that flavor text so you get a sense of what you're doing on the battlefield. That always helps, you know. Uh, narrative play can be really competitive too, and it can, but it, it helps just, you know, uh, give you a bit more juice, you know, out, out of out of the game. And I, and I love that. I love creating those stories. I think we all do. Even if you, even if you're competitive, you still like those stories, those moments where your characters do something really cool on the battlefield. You know, it creates a narrative in and of itself, you know, and that all helps uh, build your experience. So I think it's it's a really important thing and, and something that everyone engages in whether they like it or not it's all narrative right a lot of a lot of game, uh, competitive gamers will tell you that you know that they're all narrative gamers and in a joking way but it's true like th this whole thing is a story driven um, hobby and 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 through that it's layering so you know if, if you're on the fence about law and that sort of thing you know there are different ways to engage it it doesn't have to always be sit down read a book and so on it can just be the the the, the growing story that that 
that comes about through your experience with another player when you're playing the game, you know, or sitting at a table painting a miniature with, with a mate or whatever it is. That's also a narrative that can inform uh, your hobby and, and your experience. So all in all, I think whichever way you, you end up engaging with this story is, is, is important and, and is something to, you know, just, just enjoy. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to get into long discussions about it like I'm doing here or this isn't that long, but, you know, you know, engage in discussions about it. It just is a part of, of what makes things like this hobby really interesting. And the more of it that gets laid on top, you know, as long as it's thoughtful narrative, you don't want just sort of like baseless uh, sort of uh, drivel. But if, if, it, if it has some sort of weight behind it, something that's that's it's grounded in something real, then generally speaking, you can enjoy it and you can get something out of it and it can it can make your hobby, you know, a better experience all around. So I think that's where we'll leave it. Uh, you can tell me what you think in the comments, that sort of thing, uh, whether I've waffled on too long, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but let's see how I've gone with this vampire. I'm sure it's been a fun one because, uh, you know, this vampire just ticks all the boxes for me, so I'm sure it's gonna be cool. But let's check out and see what I've done. Well, what a pleasure this was. I mean, you know, what a perfect model to do a blue-green blend on, right? Uh, it was made for me. Uh, well, anyone that loves to do this kind of stuff, I mean, really, really cool. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot. So there's my thoughts on some uh, lore and so on and the importance of it and all that sort of thing. Um, you know, I mean... As I, as I said, you know, each person has their own views on it, and uh, it's one of those sort of discussions that can go on forever. But uh, in this case, I think it's uh, turned out well because we've got a really cool model that's based on a book, and it's uh, it's wonderful, right? It's such a good vampire. The the sculptor did did an amazing job. Uh, you know, there's so many good details on here. Uh, really well done. So yeah, I'm I'm super happy. It's going to uh, take a nice uh, a nice pride of place in my collection. It's uh, super cool. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll leave a, a nice image of at the end in the the paint list as i usually do but i hope you've enjoyed this please hit that like button subscribe button it really helps me out and i guess i'll uh catch you on the next one